So everybody knows that internet addresses all have dots in them, except for the ones that don't. Wait, what? Fun fact, it's actually entirely possible for a website to exist with zero dots in its address. Like these websites. Try typing in pn slash or ai slash into your web browser. If it doesn't work on your desktop, try doing it on your phone. Oh, and look at that, a couple of real, actual web pages without a dot in sight. But why? You already know that the end of a web address is typically something like .com or .net. These are called top-level domains, or TLDs. No R. They help get you to the website you want, but as the name implies, they're still domains, meaning they can, in theory, direct you to a specific website on their own if you just typed in something like com or net with nothing else attached. The most common TLDs aren't associated with specific web addresses, but there are some two-letter TLDs that were originally meant to be used by folks within a specific country. So like a .uk TLD if you live in London and need to make a website for your fish and chip shop. But these country code TLDs can instead be used for other purposes, including mapping to specific websites on their own, like in the examples we gave towards the beginning of this video. And for you networking nerds, all you need to make a dotless domain work is to link it to something called an address record, or an A record, that will use the DNS to point the dotless domain to an actual IP address and return you a nice, shiny web page. Why the heck isn't this more common? I mean, wouldn't it be easy to simply type in a word or a brand name and immediately get their website instead of dealing with all those messy .orgs and whatnots? I don't even, I don't like those. We'll tell you why the internet shouldn't work that way right after we thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Brilliant is a hands-on and interactive way to learn STEM topics. They offer thousands of courses with new topics to learn each month, like their everyday math course. Simply honing your ability to learn and think will translate into everyday aspects of life. Brilliant services can be used to supplement a college education, or you can just use them if getting smart is a passion of yours. The first 200 people who head to brilliant.org slash techquickie will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. All the way back in 2013, ICANN, who you can think of as our internet overlords, decided to officially ban dotless generic TLDs. These are TLDs not nominally tied to a specific country like the classic .com and .net, or more recent ones like .work or .crypto. But they weren't banned because ICANN hates fun or convenience. They had several good reasons. The first is that dotless domains actually are already in use, but they tend to be used on large internal networks that you might see inside something like a large corporation. There's actually a long history of users in these situations expecting a local site, not an internet site, to show up. Extending this functionality to the public internet could cause a namespace collision. For example, if you expected Netgear to lead to both a private page for managing your local network's equipment and Netgear's official website, because you feel like buying a new router today, your poor computer might not know how to handle that. It's a similar issue to why the examples we gave at the beginning of the video might work on your phone, but not your PC. And this fact actually highlights an even bigger problem, security. Because people have an expectation of trust when it comes to their local networks, it would be very easy to accidentally send sensitive data to a completely different public site that has the same dotless domain name. Even aside from that specific risk, many systems are configured in different ways to treat local addresses with more lax security. And if your PC thinks it's talking to a dotless domain on your local private network, but is actually connected to a public domain with the same name, that opens the door to myriad potential security holes and comedic situations. Finally, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that dotless domains would largely break email. You see, email commonly is sent over a protocol called SMTP, and SMTP simply isn't built for dotless domains. It can't even understand them. So if you try to send a message to an address that looks like this, you'll just get a big fat return to sender in reply. So it's really not surprising that when Google tried to make another push to normalize dotless domains a few years ago, ICANN told them to go pound sand. Google wanted to do this so they could register TLDs like app and search, so whenever users typed in these words, they'd get directed to a Google-owned website. Kind of reminds me of that time Subway tried to trademark the word footlong. You don't own sandwiches, Subway. 
Hey, thanks for watching this video, guys. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Check out our other videos, comment below with video suggestions, and don't forget to subscribe and follow for more videos like this one from TechWiki. And there are some other channels uh, out there too.